Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Travis and welcome back to another video. So today we are going to be looking at the CO2 scrubber attachment here on the 300 gallon reef. And uh, yesterday I went ahead and put a poll out asking if you guys wanted an updated video showing you uh, the, the current setup, some new things that I've added, and just talk about uh, how this system works and just try to answer your guys' questions. So uh, yeah, most of you uh, said that you wanted this video. A good portion of you told me go back to OnlyFans. Um, trust me, if I had an OnlyFans, I wouldn't be here hustling like I do. I'd just be slanging butthole and dick pics all day uh, to make a living. But hey, we can't all live that life. Uh, but uh, anyway, moving back to the video here. So uh, when it comes to the uh, attachment, the setup, the CO2 scrubber media, this whole thing on this Niles Quantum 300, I'm going to go through it and uh, hopefully answer all your questions. So first things first, uh, what is a CO2 scrubber and how does it work? So this uh, Phosphane 550, sorry for the blurriness there, uh, reactor. Now this is my DIY version of a CO2 scrubber. It's a very basic concept. You're gonna fill it with CO2 media, and I gotta stop putting my finger there, CO2 media, and then what's gonna happen is you're going to pull air through the media into your skimmer. What that does is the CO2 media removes the CO2 from the air, basically putting pure oxygen into your skimmer, allowing you to pump that into your reef tank. It increases the pH and can potentially increase the growth of your corals. So um, a lot of people like to go ahead and take their skimmer and run the line outside, but that's not always an option for those of us who you know rent, can't put holes in our wall, our doors. Even though uh, you know, I've, I've, I'm guilty of doing it regardless, but either way, if you don't have the ability to pull air from outside, or you just live in a climate like Florida where it's just nasty, uh, you know, can be kind of, uh, what is it, moisture, I don't know, humidity or whatever, humid. Um, if, or if you live in an environment that just isn't ideal to be pulling the air in, a CO2 scrubber is, uh, is a good thing. Now, I do have a video on how to make this, uh, but you can buy them pre-made off of like BRS or uh, is Marine Depot still a thing? I don't know. <laughs> That's how much I'm, I get out, right? But either way, you can buy them offline, Amazon. I'm sure there's always a there's always a source. Um, so with that said, uh, there were there were complaints early on when using the CO2 scrubbers uh, that uh, you were burning or we were burning through the media too quickly. So uh, with those complaints, I went ahead and developed a system which prolongs the life of the media. Uh, right now, I have reviews of people saying it went from two weeks to six weeks before burning up the media. Um, it's different per situation, per setup, per um, skimmer. But either way, most people are getting double the life of their media based on this one little thing, which is a CO2 um, scrubber ring. Now, I do have about 85-ish models on the website. And over the last year, you guys have just been sending me in skimmer lids for the most part. I do require the cup sometimes. But either way... And then I just go ahead and I make the ring, which allows you to connect it uh, directly to your CO2 scrubber and then allows you to recirculate that air within the chamber. Now, you might be saying, why would I do that? Well, if you're recirculating the air within the chamber of the skimmer, you're not pulling in extra CO2 from outside the room or if there's people or just in general. So with that air continually circulating through the skimmer, you don't have to worry about burning up the media as quickly. Now, over time, there were issues with people saying, hey, I'm getting a ton of micro bubbles from my skimmer, which is pretty common. It's getting sucked through and going into the media. So I went ahead and addressed that issue by hopefully getting in here with my gimbal, by creating a CO2, yeah, I definitely can't get in there, um, a CO2 um, collection container with a barb, or you can get the barb or the container together either way. What that does is say, because um, I'm not pulling any right now, but just say that this gets full of micro bubbles, right? It's going to go through. It will then go through the barb here and fall into the collection container and never make its way back to the media. So hopefully that makes sense. And then on top of that, I've created uh, the wall mount for it, the rimless glass mount for it. And um, again, the barbs in general, you know, various size, one fourth, three eighths and half inch. So I just kind of adjusted and modified things over the last year based on what you guys needed to make this system work really well for you. And uh, I went ahead and implemented a lot of this stuff on my own setup. Again, the Niles Quantum, Quantum 300, this is the version two of the, uh, of the attachment. It can be single barb or dual barb. And then I used the container itself, which I don't really have any issues with pulling bubbles in, but if I did, just in case. And then, of course, the DIY version of my reactor. So yeah, that's my setup. It works pretty darn good. I'm getting, let's see, what I, when did I fill that up last? Probably 
what day is it? I don't know what day it is, <laughs> but it's been about three-ish weeks since I filled that up, and I haven't had any issues. It's not really burning up the media. There's a slight little bit at the bottom, but nothing too crazy. And uh, yeah, hopefully I'll get six to eight weeks out of this, and I'll be, I'll be happy. I'll be happy with that because the media is not cheap, and being able to prolong it from being a week to like maybe two, three, four, five weeks is uh, is pretty awesome. But then again, we're down here in the basement, so there's not a lot of people. There's not a lot of CO2, which is also very helpful. So yeah. Now I'm trying to think. What questions did y'all answer, or did y'all ask I'm over here burping? Sorry. Um, let's see. What's what is uh, okay? Yeah. Where do you get the media? Uh, BRS sells, sells the media, and I know you can get it online at Amazon. Um, I'm not really sure. I do um, have a wholesale account through BRS, thankfully, so I'm able to save a little bit of money for that. Um, I would, ideally, I would like to find my own distributor and sell my own CO2 media, since I do have I have the CO2 uh, reactor um, theme going on on the website. I'm just still looking for it where I can actually, I mean, I found some sources, but I'm looking for a way that I can give you guys a good price, too. I'm not trying to, you know... I'm not, I have a, a really good theme of not charging a lot of money for the stuff that I sell uh, because uh, I like to keep the overhead low, which I can do working by myself. And then if I could find this outsourced CO2 media and resell it to you guys, uh, making just a little bit, but be able to help you out and be able to allow you guys to get everything in one stop, uh, that's kind of my goal. So if you guys have any connections or anything, let me know. Um, I'm always up for uh, you know working with somebody. So let's see, what else? Um, what happens when the collection container gets full? Uh, well, all you're going to do is uh, the lid, well that's weird how that moved. Uh, you're going to go ahead and I have a little slot here so you can see when it starts to fill up. Um, what I would do is just simply, you can lift it up out of there and the bottom screws out so you don't have to disconnect any of these tubes or anything and then just simply dump it out, put it back in. Um, if you're finding that it's filling up relatively quickly, you might need to adjust the bubble level in your skimmer because there is a point where it's just too high, it's constantly filling. Now I do have a drain. Ooh, here we go. I do have a drain container right there, drain line, which goes over to a five-gallon um, collection container. So I don't really have to worry about it filling up liquid-wise, but the bubbles themselves, if you are uh, too high in the uh, the chamber of the skimmer, you can get a lot of micro bubbles. But the way that I've designed these uh, CO2 attachments is that the air inlet actually goes, points towards the top of the skimmer lid. So the chances of pulling in the bubbles in the first place are really slim. Again, unless you have it completely full, the cup itself completely full of these micro bubbles. But if you are filling up too quickly, just go ahead and dump it out more often and adjust the uh, the level of the bubbles in your skimmer. What's up, Wiggles? She's all over the place. Um, yeah, appreciate appreciate all the positive feedback about the cat. Uh, yeah, she uh, she just licks everything. I don't I don't really know what to do about that, but she just does. Anyways, um, I'm trying to think what else you guys asked about the CO2 scrubbers. Um, oh yeah, so if your model's not on the website. You can email me at fishfx at gmail.com. Just send me a link of uh, what skimmer you have, and um, I'll send you yeah, I'll send you the shipping address. You can send the cup in, and then um, I'll give you a, right now. I'm doing the promo. I'll give you a hundred dollar uh, gift card for the website uh, that you can use at a later date for coral or three D printing, whatever you want. But yeah, so if your model's not on there and you live within the United States, uh, definitely uh, let me know. Now, if you live outside the United States and you're looking for one of these skimmer lids, I do not ship outside. I'm actually looking for somebody who is willing to partner with me that can take care of some of the stuff outside the United States. But I am getting to the point where I'm willing to sell you the STL file so you can um, print it yourself. Now I'm trying to figure out how to do that so it can't be mass produced by somebody else. Um, so I'm working on that. So if you're interested and you have a 3D printer and you want to print one, your, one yourself, you can reach out to me again, fishofhacks at gmail.com, and I'll work something out with you. Um, just trying to figure out the whole STL printing limit, if there's such a thing. So, with that said, uh, Wiggles, what's up? With that said, I think that's it, guys. Um, if there's any other questions that you have regarding this setup, let me know. Uh, if you have any recommendation, recommendations or suggestions to make it even better, please put that stuff in the comment section. Again, I'm always up for adapting and making things work for you guys, okay? So, with that said, I will uh, I'll see you later, and uh, have a good day. Peace.